Look at this clever little button. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <coughs> Give him a little call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dance time. Yeah. Uh, now, like two drinks, like a lingu cola. Lingu cola. Yeah. Ah, one lingu cola, one coffee. So we're we're treating ourselves to uh, some, some Chinese food. No, <laughs> we've actually been to this restaurant before. It was so damn good. Yeah. Last time, and the video came out so well because the food was so succulent and delicious that we had to come back. But we got different stuff this time. Oh yeah, yeah. And we're in we're indoors now. We're not in that little outdoor thing. Apologize know? in advance for the lighting. Yes. I'm assuming yes. it's probably very dim, but at least you'll feel the same kind of ominous feeling that we feel in here. Yeah. <laughs> Mood music. Yeah. So basically, what we've ordered is a bunch of um, thank you. What's called a, a biendan in Chinese? It's called a bento or obento in Japan. And in English, it's called bento. Yeah, there you go. Which is the, the Japanese word. Yeah, it's basically just like a, a lunch box. Right, but it's got all kinds of swank stuff in it. Yeah, should, we get. should be pretty good. Looking forward to so it. So our topic today is, you know, how has China actually improved us? Like what? Okay, like, let's, we could say like positively impacted our lives, yeah. right? Because we often talk about current events here, mm. and I feel like this kind of face-to-face -face interaction that we have with these Off the Bikes episodes lends itself to maybe some more personal details in our lives, right? Yes, absolutely. I have a feeling a lot of our... Oh, you, yeah, make sure you do that, dude. Dude, you almost screwed up the video. Okay, let's continue on. That. Yeah, yeah. Is it, you probably can't see anything in here. This. No, not really. It's, the lighting's very bad, like we said. Apologies. I have this assumption. I have this assumption that most of the subscribers on ADV China probably subscribe to either me or you or both. Yeah. Probably mostly you because you uh, have the most amount of subscribers, right? That being said, we I do the believe other. there are yeah. people that are solely subscribed to ADV China. Yeah. Because when I do check the analytics, I do see that there is a very different demographic to that channel. Okay. Right. So maybe they don't know about us. Maybe they don't know about some of the details in our lives in China, right? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And to kind of riff on that one video we did about our best and worst experiences, I want to talk about actual character changes that we've had in China, right? right? Okay. You want to start off? Like, what's the first thing that positively impacted you? China positively impacted your life? Well, I suppose it taught me how to be very self-reliant. I mean, don't get me wrong, I had always been self-reliant before. But, you know, when you, at least for me, when I was living in South Africa, you still have friends and family to fall back on if you need oh, them. You I see know what I mean? mean? Yeah. So, like, if you're going through some issues or some trouble, you, you can always ask for some help, you know, or whatever. So it's kind of when you go to a new place, you're forced to... You, well, you know, it, it was... Independent change. It was an absolute trial by fire for me because I didn't come here... I think when you came here, oh, you know, I'm pretty sure it was a, this sort of situation Just where, a, thank you, I, you were part of a school, right, or part of a training center or something, so they, yeah, they yeah, took care job. of everything for you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, for the most I part. I mean, like, accommodation, yeah. uh, you know, kind of had somebody to show you how to get food yeah. or whatever. Probably. Uh, yeah, like a, yeah, more or less. Like a, an assistant or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did have an like assistant. She was very helpful, actually. Yeah, yeah. So you, Shout out to you, Eileen. I mean, so yeah. The waitress cute. I didn't check. Yeah, I wasn't oh, okay. paying attention. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry. We can see next time. We'll see next time. Uh, you get the steamed egg again. Let's get some... Uh, here, how about you get some... I some love to get the shots. steamed egg. Oh, do you like, do And the misos. Oh, okay. oh, thank you. Okay, let me just cut it down very, very straightforward. You know, I, I come from South Africa. I had been to the UK, of course, growing yeah. up because I've got family there and whatnot. But, um, you know, I lived in Africa. And to come to this, like, sprawling metropolis of Shenzhen, right. I, it's the first time that I had to try and figure out how to use the, like, a metro system. Of, yeah, of course, yeah. I had used the... Under Big city stuff, right? Yeah, I'd used the underground in London, like, years and years and years ago, but it works quite differently to here. Right. So now you've got uh, this city where you have to figure everything out. Nobody speaks English. All of a sudden you have... Taxis. We don't have taxis in South Africa. You can really use. We've got these minibus taxis, but they're. I heard those are dangerous. Very dangerous. It's for the black population. White people don't use them because you get robbed and you know what have you. Right. Um, it's just the way it is. And there's taxi violence, like you won't believe. Um, right. Anyway, you know, you drive everywhere in South Africa. Here, you have to learn how to take buses, take the metro. You know, you also have to figure out like how to do everything on your own because. You don't have your own agency anymore. You don't have your own car. You know, you don't have your own house. Now you're right. on. Yeah, the not having your own car thing was a massive thing. So you're saying all these things kind of led to independence. Yeah, well, in a way. 
Self-reliance. Self-reliance, yeah. So I could now literally be thrown, I mean, like Africa, you can throw me in the middle of the bush and I'll survive, I'll figure it out, because right. I grew up in that sort of situation, but throw me in the middle of any kind of metropolis anywhere in the world, I will figure out the train routes, I'll figure out how, yeah. how everything works, and yeah, so it taught me self-reliance in the big city. Gotcha, so that's, that's that is a big thing for sure. I, I would near that, and I don't even have to explain because that was exactly the same for me. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a fairly small town in America, so mm -hmm. for me, it was like, it wasn't necessarily just China, it was like all of that kind of big city lifestyle stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Getting around mostly. Yeah. It teaches you how to, how to figure that stuff out. Right. And number two, I, I would say for me, was being resilient mm -hmm. in you know, dealing with things, particularly like scams and things like this, right? Oh, so right. coming from a country of pure blind trust, like for the most part, everyone will help each other out. Mm -hmm. People kind of blindly trust each other. Yeah, there's crime and there's crazy bad stuff that happens, but for the most part, people you know are okay with each other, and you can leave your stuff around. And yep. you know, some places you don't even have to lock your doors. You know, you trust your neighbors and stuff. Yep. I know you like to watch a lot of those crime dramas. So you oh, see yeah, the, yeah. the real nitty gritty of America. But uh, <laughs> in China, you know, it's very very easy. Although people are for the most part very friendly, it's very easy to lose your way and get really, really disgruntled with life here because you can be had at every corner. Oh yeah, people right? take at advantage shop, of you. Yeah, they're just selling food, you something, right? Selling you something. When you're like not used to driver. bargaining, right. you're like, oh, that's the <clears throat> price. Right. Mm. Yeah, you know, I've had friends up in Gansu and stuff that a taxi driver will drive them out to the middle of nowhere and then hold them up with a knife. You know? yeah, Probably won't stab them or anything, but extorted getting money extorted yeah, yeah. from you. Dealing with these situations that keep you on your toes, mm day in and day out for seven, eight years now, definitely taught me to be resilient and, and keep your eye out for stuff that's going on around you. Yeah, that was never an issue for me because I come from <clears throat> South Africa, like I said, right, I'm used to- Right, it wasn't a jump for you. Yeah, I'm kind of used to the, the, the crime, so right. I was always on the lookout. So I avoided pickpocketing, I avoided being scammed, Right. you know, for the most part, you know. So yeah, that wasn't a huge thing, but definitely a lot of my uh, friends, like from America or the UK, mm. they, get, they get taken for a ride. Like for sure. Everywhere here, they'll say, oh, look what I just bought. Particularly in the big cities. Yeah. It's like, look what remember I that, Remember that uh, silk market we went to in Beijing? Oh, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, check out the Beijing scams video. It's if a you great want to video. See what they're trying to charge, like 3,000 RMB for something that's 105 RMB. Yeah, so go check out his Beijing scams video and then go check out. I did the vlog of the same day where I went yeah. into the shop. Yeah, yeah. And we challenged the price. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's eye opening stuff. Totally. Pretty interesting stuff. But yeah, that, that's mine. What about your next one? Uh, let's see. Well, no, I could always use chopsticks. <laughs> I used chopsticks before I came to China. Um, That's really annoying, by the way, is everyone will compliment your chopstick skills. No, not only compliment, they just say, oh, and here is young quads. And they're like, oh, you can also use chopsticks while you're using them. It's like, whoa, yeah. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Nice, interesting. Nice, yeah. Oh. Um, I'm trying to think, my handwriting improved. Your handwriting because I did all that training and you know before that all the teaching and stuff so I have to write on the board oh true I was never never much for handwriting mm. my handwriting improved definitely <laughs> that's a good point and you know maybe grammar and stuff when you're having to teach it you have to learn all the ins and outs you never really thought of before and of course the opportunity to to learn another language right yeah you know, obviously I never wanted to learn Chinese it was never my goal. I know a lot of people, the, the reason they come to China, they want to study China, Chinese or they, they want to learn about the, all the traditional culture. Right. But for me, I, have, I had no interest in learning Chinese at all. Right. Um, I was always interested in learning Japanese and I can speak Japanese or could anyway, not that much anymore. Right. So when I got here, I just wanted to move here because I, I really liked the place because it was vibrant and you know interesting and lots of things happening. But I didn't want to learn Chinese. Mm. Thing is, after a while, I kind of gave in and said, you know what, I, I have to. I'm mm. living here, there's no way I can survive without learning it. And I'm glad I did because, you know, it is, it's an interesting language and it gives me another skill. Right. Mm. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, how totally about you? I totally agree with that. Um, I'm going to say self-confidence. And this is, don't laugh, everyone out there. I've, I've never had self-confidence <laughs> issues, but mm -hmm. what I mean is <clears throat> true self-confidence. Because when you come to another country where you're constantly being assessed, and that's what I'm going to say, is you're constantly being looked at, assessed, watched, complimented, criticized, because you stand out. You're different, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. When you, It's very easy back home, when you're in your own country, to kind of just float on by, mm. because you're just a dude like everyone else. Yeah. Everyone looks the same when you walk around the mall, nobody looks at you, you're just a normal guy, right? Correct, yeah. And there's two things that can happen to you in China. One is that it goes to your head, because you're going to be complimented, you're going to see people say you're handsome, beautiful. Your Chinese is amazing, despite it being shit. Yeah. Right? No. 
uh, wow, you can use chopsticks. All of this like positive attention for the most part can really go to some people's heads, right? Right, right. But I think it does wonders for people that had confidence issues back home. Yeah. Because when they come over here, maybe they're really shy or they're not very mm -hmm. confident in themselves. They come over here and maybe it's false, you know, false positives that people are feeding them. Yeah. At the end of the day, it does help their confidence, I think, Correct. their personality. Yeah. Sure. The, the healthy way that this can go about mm -hmm. is just kind of being in a situation where most interactions that you have with people are positive. I'm going to say this is more true in you'll the past. Make, you'll make a lot of friends. You'll make a lot of friends very quickly, right? So to be in a situation where it's not just a daily exchange at the gas station where it's just kind of like, oh yeah, you're doing blah, blah, blah. That's nice, it's friendly. But yeah. in China, when, like, especially when we travel around and stuff, it's genuine interactions and genuine curiosity. Mm -hmm. It can get annoying at times, but it's genuine. People are like, wow, tell me your story. Where are you from? What do you do? Blah, blah, blah. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, right? when you've been here for 11 years and you it get that get question tiresome. every day, it does get tiresome. But I do think it's, it's not tiresome. I think it's not very interesting. Not to complain. I mean, I, I sound very bitter to say that, but no, trust no. me, it's like... Come on, guys. <laughs> Are you all reading from the same playbook here? You know, uh, if you see a foreigner, ask these five questions. Yeah. I think that's probably a thing. We should have like a T-shirt that has, answers all of them. I saw somebody in one of the groups I'm in that you know that fly DJI drones. Uh -huh. They had a T-shirt made that says it. It's a DJI. This all in Chinese. It can fly this high. It can go this fast. It that's can take video for that long. All the you know all the basic questions. That's freaking hilarious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, long story short, I do think that. You know, it's tiresome for us being here, but for a newcomer, I think it's probably the best thing. Mm. And I do think it does change your character, and it changes you to be more outgoing, even if you're a shy person. Correct, correct. Yeah. You got anything else? It definitely helped me get over my road rage. Because South Africa, I keep going back, but it's the same in the, in the States. I mm. drove across the States mm. twice. I know what it's all about. But when you're driving in a country like South Africa or America, if you stick to the road rules, everything's cool, right? But then when somebody like cuts you off or, you know, like doesn't obey the road rules or goes through a stop sign or does something bad, then you'll get automatically really angry at them. Of right? course. And you're like, what the you freak hell? Out. And you're like, this <clears throat> crap, you know, and you might like hoot at them. You might chase them down and pull them out of the car and beat them up. Whoa. I've never done that. Um, no, I've never done that. But you've seen it. Anyway, yeah. I've been in some very bad road rage incidents in South Africa because uh -huh. you've got half the population trying to obey the road rules in those minibus taxis always like driving on the side of the road and oh. trying to squeeze in and doing crazy things and putting everyone's lives in danger in danger so you get anyway. pissed off with those guys oh yeah so you know i used to be a very aggressive driver mm. and I, I still am an aggressive driver but you know i used to be aggressive and are. yeah like really like you know i'd be that guy who'd be you know getting really pissed off mm. but in china because everybody drives badly and i mean everybody mm. no exceptions mm. i've never met a person in china who actually drives correctly never and it does I not, can't refute that. It's the truth, okay? They just drive badly, either too slow or they just float Drift. over the lanes, yeah. never no use indicators, signals. you know, just always trying to squeeze in. They've got no... They should take a note from me, yeah. leaving their indicator on all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, there's there's no politeness. You won't ever... There's no courtesy, I should say. They, yeah. They'll never, like, let you in. Right. They'll, in fact, accelerate to prevent to you from prevent ever you from getting in. So, in the beginning, I was like, you pieces of crap. And right. I was just like, ah, but then you realize <laughs> there's nothing you can do because they're no. all bad. Like everybody's bad. So you just have to kind of start to learn how to drive like them. I actually think you win this conversation. That is quite possibly the biggest thing that we, that's changed about us. Yeah. Because you would freak the F out if yeah. anything that happened every day that we drive here happened yeah. back home. Yeah, yeah, you, you would. And you'd insane. probably talk about it to all your friends. Hey, there was this guy down at the gas station. He cut me off. Talk. Yeah, you know. I'd carry a gun on me if that was the, yeah. you know, the way people, it's insane. It's absolutely like crazy. Massive trucks just stop in the middle of the road, do U-turns in front of all these And you see things. the aftermath too when oh, we yeah. watch. Oh, yeah. People send us WeChat videos. Oh, we've seen it in real life on the road. Yeah, on the road. You see how people get run over and just die all the time. Thing is, you, you get to this point where you realize, well, you know what? You got me this I'm not time. Change anything. I'll get you next time. You know, it's like <laughs> we're, we're all driving bad here, you know. We said we'd be a little more personal though, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, so go for it. No, I just want to point out that you do have a tendency to, to herd people. <laughs> so you have your road rage has been cured, but let me tell you what Winston does. If someone's being bad on the highway and like trying to like cut people off and stuff, or like there's a traffic jam and he knows the reason mm. he will use his tiny little car to physically herd people into the <laughs> right direction and it's not road rage he's like genuinely doing you're trying to fix the traffic situation you have yeah. fixed it before i've seen it i've had people where you know there's there's a hold up so everyone's like basically stopped and people are just going on the emergency lane like, mm. going past and then trying to squeeze in at the front and it just makes it, way it causes worse. it yeah 
So I'll move my little car like half on, half off. Right. So there's just not enough space for them to get past me. And I'm just kind of holding back everybody at the same pace of the traffic. And they're going ape, you know, like hooting and stuff. And it's like, whatever, dude. And I even open my doors to make my car wider sometimes. And I'll just cruise down the road there. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's, a good, that's a good Samaritan move. That's a good Samaritan move. Anyway. Uh, I guess I'll finish it off with one yeah. more. Yeah, please. I want to taste our food on camera. I wish they would hurry up. Yeah, we'll get some B-roll. We'll we'll show you guys. If they don't come in time. That's okay. We'll just insert it right now. You we'll can see our, it right now. our awesome food. And we'll even say some words about it. Yeah, it's uh, Three, really... Three, two, one. Okay, and we're back. Yeah, we're How did back. you enjoy that? That was really good, wasn't it? I couldn't wait for that future food. Yeah, me too. It's going to be delicious. Oh, yeah. Um, The last thing I'm going to say is a bit of a oxymoron. Because mm -hmm. it's not true, but it's also true in, to to different extreme. Is generosity. And what do I mean by that? Well... In China, I would say the average person to the average stranger is very not generous, just incredibly mm -hmm. ungenerous, like very selfish. It's a mm -hmm. selfish culture. Yeah. I don't mean that people are evil, but I do mean that people are out for themselves and for the people immediately in their lives, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But by the same token, to those people in their lives, I have noticed a very, very blind and stalwart generosity. Mm -hmm particularly among family members. Now, oh, yeah. I do hate when Chinese people say, oh, you Westerners don't care about your families as much, because I vehemently disagree with that. Oh, yeah. We love our family members. Just yeah, we just <laughs> don't need to be kissing their ass 24 seven. Right. You know, we just see them once every couple of years, it's okay for me. Sure, but those Confucian values yeah. uh, kind of make that impossible for a Chinese person. And that does lend itself to families being less tight-knit in the respect that they're like personally involved with each other, but more tight-knit about their things, right? Mm -hmm. So lending their car, their money, their yeah. everyone's pretty close, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to buy a house, you can just go to your family and like get money from uncles and right. aunts and weird people out there. I've noticed that, like me and you, of course, we would give each other any skin off, you know, right, skin right. off our back, shirt off our shirt back. Shirt off our right? back, yeah. I don't know about the I'm skin. not going to give you any skin, dude. No, that's Sorry. a bit weird. I eat it. It's mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, Maybe if you get horribly obese and you have extra off cuts or something. Right, yeah. right. But I would not, you know, be able to give thousands and thousands of dollars to somebody I don't know very well. Yeah, like say your nephew or something. My nephew or something, yeah. right? I, I just wouldn't be able to do that because I know that money is necessary for my family. I'm not yeah. rich, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I've seen Chinese families do is they will lend money to distant relatives mm -hmm. and, you know, distant friends. Yeah. People that are kind of in their peng yo chen or their family, yeah, yeah. their friend circle like that. Yeah. So it's kind of taught me that like in the way that, you know, bills are usually not split in China when you go out to dinner and stuff. Sure. All of these little things over eight years kind of make you realize that maybe being closer to the people that are near you is more important than being just blindly friendly to strangers. I think both are important. Yeah. It's just that they're both different extremes. You can take a lot from the family values here, but you can also take a lot from the fact that people are actually really awful to strangers. Um, you That's know, like, true. Like I said, it goes you, both you ways. Can, you can learn a lot, like take warnings right. from that, you know, so <laughs> learn how to improve your life in that aspect, you know. Right. I've actually had to, at some point here in China, tell myself, listen, Stop behaving like the people around you. You're better than that. You know, like hold so open a door. You, hold people. open yeah. a door for right. someone. You know, because they don't do that here. Most you know, if are. somebody is injured or hurt, help them. You know, because right. nobody will do that here. So you and know, we we pushed ourselves to be that person in China, which is really good. I think. Yeah, right. you've got to you've got to you've got to stick to your you know your good stuff. But they have a lot of good stuff when it comes to family, which we can learn from. Right, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was okay. I hope it's very, definitely unbiased. I want to go full into this stuff. Yeah. But I do think your character changes, particularly when you're in a different country. And there's this famous yeah. psychologist that said, uh, when you study another language, you become a different person. You yeah, have the chance to become a different person. Your brain actually rewires. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think also just living in a different country, your brain rewires in a certain mm -hmm. way too. So there's a lot to take away from moving abroad. I agree. It's fantastic. It's a f everybody should do it. I mean. If you can go live abroad for a year somewhere, it doesn't matter where, you should. Yeah. A completely different culture. You know, I'm not saying like go from Florida to Alabama or something. No. Because, you know, Alabama's awesome, by the way. I know you like to talk smack about them. Don't take their side. I don't have Dude. any problem with Alabama. Bar barbecue? It's freaking fantastic. Alabama's a wonderful place. I was just talking about the... Have like... you ever been to Alabama? Yes, I okay. have. Been to every state, so why? Okay. All right. Anyway. anyway. Anything you'd like to say before we sign off? Uh, whether you have changed or you've remained the same kind of stalwart individual your entire life, or you're a chameleon like us, we can change, you know, adapt to every situation around us. What color am I? Yeah. Um, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Color is a spectrum. It is. Well, yeah, there is a color spectrum. <laughs> you know, you know, black's not really a color. Yeah, it's actually all the color. It's the absence of color, and white is all colors mixed together. 
Yeah. So there we are. You see, we're a spectrum of color. We are. Yeah. All the foods oh, are out. Cool. Future food, dude. Yeah, excellent. So uh, while we chow down, I'd just like to tell all of you guys out there to, you know, uh, stay awesome. They, they, have no they, proof, they have no proof that they're staying awesome. Right now. You could have been lying, dude. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gave a cheeky thumbs up. Okay, cool. Okay, we're good. Take a breath, you fill up my lungs. Yeah. And if my mind.